Hello, and welcome to today's live coaching call and community conversation. Today, we are going to be talking about and answering the question that I get a lot here in this community, and that is, is fasting safe for everyone? So hopefully we'll get that question answered for you today if you have had that question yourself. Uh, really quickly, I'd just like to do a little housekeeping before we get started on the conversation for today. Uh, if you are new, I always like to welcome you. Uh, make sure you have subscribed here on YouTube and make sure you hit that little bell notification. I know a lot of you have been bummed that you've missed us live. That little bell notification will let you know on whatever device you tune in on uh, that we are actually live. And I also put a little reminder in the community section on my YouTube channel as well with the link so you can go directly there. And then if you're joining us on Facebook, again, just make sure you're following the page and that you also, there's like a little drop down and you just sit yourself up for all notifications and that way you'll be notified as well. So my name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the online course and community, the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman. Here we get together on Mondays and Thursdays at noon central standard time to talk about the most commonly asked questions or some of the situations that come up with us as women when we really are trying to reverse a lot of the things that are ailing us as aging women, right? A lot, a lot of the signs and symptoms of aging. And so today we're going to talk about fasting in general and is it safe for everyone? So the first thing I'd like to do is, well, first, before we get started, if in the comment section, let me know if you're currently practicing an intermittent fasting lifestyle. Um, so I'll kind of know where your like experience level is. Um, but the first thing we want to ask ourselves, not ask anybody else, but ask ourselves, like, what does safe mean to us, right? So when we hear or when we get the question of is fasting safe, we have to go to ourselves first and say, what do I consider safe? And oftentimes what happens is we interchange fast with comfortable. And we think that if something feels uncomfortable or our body is in a, like a season of adjustment that feels like not normal to us, we deem that as unsafe. And so I want you to ask yourself, why don't we ask that same question or why don't we consider safety when we're eating, right? Like why is it that's, that it's okay as a society to do things that potentially over time become unsafe? How do we know they're unsafe? Because most of us are ending up, you know, in this menopausal season with things we're having to manage medically, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol issues, um, weight that we're unable to lose, the memory loss, the, you know, the fear of uh, getting Alzheimer's, like all of those things are because we have done things that our body has considered unsafe for us. And so we start to break down. So first thing, you have to define what safe means for you and the current situation you are in in your life. Going without food when you consciously decide to have a period of your day where you're not going to interfere with your body's hormones or chemical reactions is a very safe environment for your body if you do the foundational work, you do your research, if you're managing something with the doctor, make sure you, you talk about it with your doctor, and your mindset is going to then determine whether you as the individual feel like it's safe or if you're going to go into it feeling like it's sketchy for you or, or iffy for you, right? But you, the individual, are really the only one that can decide if it's safe for you. Now, of course, there are groups of people or people who have been identified as candidates who might need to eat more frequently throughout the day. One of those groupings is pregnant women. So for a lot of us here in this community who are perimenopausal, postmenopausal, and transitioning through that season, we don't really like fit into that category, right? For younger women, or if you have been pregnant, I want you to think about what your body does on its own when you're transitioning through the season of pregnancy. If you were like me, I was nauseous. I didn't feel like eating. So it's not that you have to purposely fast, but isn't it fascinating that your body just sends you signs and signals that you're transitioning hormonally as well and food is just revolting to you? And if you listen to those signs and signals, like 
that's just how our body operates, right? But you shouldn't like necessarily force yourself against what your body's telling you to do if you're in a season of pregnancy, right? For me, when I was going through my um, infertility struggles, I naturally leaned into fasting and just changing what I did with my nutrition, which is more in line with what I'm doing now. And two times I was able to reverse the infertility issues that I was having and conceive the children I have today. So we have to think about that as well, right? But you don't want to force a fasting protocol if you're pregnant, if it goes against how you're feeling. The other group of people, um, uh, uh, and it goes in line with, you know, pregnancy is, you know, women who are nursing. And again, you just need those nutrients and you need the extra food to support what it is you're asking of your body. So remember our body, we always ask it of things and then we have to listen to the answers that our body is giving us. So if you're a woman and you're nursing and you're having low milk supply, the first thing that was probably recommended is, you know, up your food intake, right? So that's one of those things that just makes common sense. The other group of people who have been advised to maybe reconsider going into a fasting lifestyle, most importantly, extreme amounts of time of fasting, so days upon days, are women um, or people in general who have either been diagnosed with or are currently under the care of a doctor for eating disorders, right? And then again, it's that it's another one of those things that I say, okay, let's think common sense wise though. If if you weren't fasting and you developed an eating disorder that has been diagnosed and you're being treated for it, then how is fasting the thing that's to blame? And again, I think that's one of those warnings that just comes from not having enough experience with people who are successfully fasting and the fear of going without food. So I always recommend if you're one of those uh, people who is, you know, uh, has been diagnosed with an eating disorder and have struggled in that area, always talk it over with your doctor. And I know that there have been a lot of women here in this community who have been that candidate and have uh, eased into a fasting protocol and have reported back that they felt like it was for the first time in their life, they felt really healed about how they um, view food in their life and taking care of their body. So again, be careful about these blanket statements that we hear that are warning us against things that are, for a lot of us, just the natural way that our body is, is designed to operate and progress through life. We always have to make sure we're going in with the mindset, and I said this in the very beginning, is what does safe mean to you? And if it feels unsafe or it feels like your body is not going to respond well, then you have to do some more research to figure out if this, in fact, is going to be a lifestyle that's going to work for you. And the truth is it does not work for everyone and for a host of different reasons, right? So always make sure that you do your research. And if you're looking for an excuse or a reason to justify not wanting to intermittent fast, then that statement that it's not safe is a perfect out for sure. And it's a very legitimate out because you might be the person that can't wrap your head around going, you know, several hours without food. So always make sure you're doing your own research. Um, and then always make sure that you're considering where the advice is coming from and why that person is saying it. And oftentimes, again, myself included, what I talk about here comes from my personal experience, my education, and the feedback that I get from women in our community who have reported back to me saying, I was a person who was diagnosed with an eating disorder. I had been under the care of a, of a doctor, but I went into it with a different mindset and I came out feeling really in control of how I'm moving forward. There are other women who have reached out to me with the eating disorders um, diagnosed and under care and said, there's no way I feel like I would be comfortable living this lifestyle. And my advice is always like, then definitely go with your comfort level, right? But be very careful because... Um, it can be anything that we do in life can be safe if we go into it with a safe set of boundaries and a safe mindset going in. So hopefully that answers the question about is fasting safe for everyone? My honest advice is yes, everyone should be fasting at some point in their day for whatever length of time you, you deem as appropriate for you. But you have to do the head work, you have to do the mental work, you have to do the emotional work and back that up with what are you asking from your body? 
and listen to the signs and signals. That's the answer your body's going to give you, the feedback. And if it feels good, it feels natural, it feels comfortable, you're seeing the signs um, and signals of things changing in a positive direction, then you are a candidate for fasting for sure. And it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say. And then I always have to say, make sure you talk to your doctor as well. Um, because your doctor is ultimately going to be the one that's going to give you the best advice about what it is you're doing with your care. Okay. So I have to say this as well, because everyone comes in to me in the DMs and asks. So we do have a class starting on July the 2nd. It's the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course. We talk and break down all these thoughts and all these warnings and all this, this advice that everyone gathers on the internet. And we bring it to one place. And over a three week period, I give you a lesson every single day that helps you you, the individual woman, create a lifestyle for yourself around intermittent fasting so that you can look and feel your best and do that in your most authentic way. I put the link in the comment section. You can, there are links are everywhere. You can DM me. I will get you information about how to get started with us. Again, we start on July 2nd. I will start emailing everyone who's on my email list next week for a personal invite, or you can join now if you're ready. Lisa, hello, girlfriend. It's so good to have you with us. Uh, Consuelo, hello from Switzerland. Good to have you with us. Irene, day six, going strong. Girlfriend, that is the best. I love hearing that. Sue, um, good to have you with us as well. Um, and I love when you guys talk to each other in the in the comments as well. And welcome everyone to the to the talk today. This is the best community of mostly women, I'll say people, but mostly women that I have um, had the privilege of spending the last five plus years with. I love you guys. I love hearing your stories. I love hearing your success. And I love when you share in the comment section. So please keep that up. Um, it makes it super fun for me as well. Lisa, yes, I don't eat after three and fast Sunday to Tuesday morning um, at 10 a.m. Fantastic. I love that for you. Francis, yes, I'm currently doing 24. You know, that's my favorite. Uh, Jane, hello from California. Uh, IF week seven. Good for you, girlfriend. Michelle. Yes. Most often 16, eight and some 22 too. Yeah. The, the thing about, you know, any time after the 20 hour fast is for a lot of women usually happens on accident, right? Cause you're feeling so good. You have so much energy and you just are going about your day. And then you look down and you're like, Oh my gosh, I've been fasting for 20 plus hours. And that is something that I absolutely love hearing from you guys. So, uh, you know, that 20 hour mark is really where we have the opportunity to retrain our hunger hormones and reestablish how our body spends its day uh, storing and utilizing the energy that we provide for it. So good for you, girlfriend. Uh, uh, Huna, I think it is currently practicing alternate day fasting. I've been since March and I feel good. Good for you. Good for you. Sue, yes, minimum 20 hour fasting and occasional 42 hour fast. Yeah, I think that that's great. I know a lot of people mix in those longer fasts. I used to do that. Um, but I just, my life's too busy right now to kind of manage that with family around. So, um, but I love it when you guys do that. It's super fun. Eve, I've been doing one meal a day for about two months. Good girlfriend. I hope you're thriving there. Cynthia from New Jersey. Welcome. Rosemary. I'm fasting 20 hours and feasting for four, but not losing. It is only two weeks. So I feel better, but need to see the weight come off. I've lost, I have 120 pounds to lose. Um, oftentimes, um, Rosemary, and I say this here all the time, remember your body decides the hierarchy of healing and weight loss is the last phase of the healing process. So give your body the time and the grace that it needs to heal from the inside out. We are used to making changes from the outside in and those tend to not last very long. So I promise you, if you consistently stick to this, over time, the weight will come off because your body won't have anything else to do but get rid of the weight. So it's healing on the inside and that's the route we want to go. I recommend if you haven't taken the class yet, jump in with us on July 2nd. I teach you all about this in class and teach you about why it is your body's taking the time to lose the weight. And if you're feeling good, remember when you feel better, you make better decisions for yourself because you don't want to jeopardize that feeling. So Keep all those things in check and make sure that you're you're listening to the answers that your body's giving you when you're having those asks to it for sure. Annie, hi. Susan, changed from 16 8 to 24 10 days ago. Love it. Down four pounds already. Fantastic, girlfriend. Good for you. Jane, um, I'm anywhere from 16 8 to 24. Awesome. I love it. Patty, alcohol unsafe. Well, alcohol is not unsafe for everyone. 
alcohol, if it's used um, responsibly, um, is definitely not unsafe. But if you have deemed it unsafe for you, then I would definitely stay away from it for sure. But I don't really like to um, label anything as good or bad here. You have to really decide that for yourself. Deb, alternate day, 24. Good for you. Uh, Patty, insulin injections, unsafe. Insulin injections are not unsafe. Insulin in injections are those things that... Um, that sometimes we need to have them to kickstart a lifestyle change. So again, if you're a person who ha is working with your doctor and your doctor feels like insulin injections are something that you need and you don't want that to be your lifestyle moving forward, then you have to do the work to reverse whatever situation is causing your doctor to want you to have insulin injections. So yes, insulin injections don't cure anything. They help you manage something. And then you as the person get to decide which route you want to take. Um, I think I shared with you guys in a couple of videos. Um, I'm working with my mother-in-law right now who, um, whose doctor wanted to put her on medication to manage her diabetes. Um, and for my friends who's, uh, who are in their eighties and nineties, and I always wonder if this works for you. My mother, my grandma, my mother-in-law is in her nineties and she lowered her A1C one entire point in the course of three months, taking the advice that I give y'all here. So it works. Uh, you just have to make the decision to, um, to, uh, implement it for sure. Sandy, January, 2022 grad 24, at least every day, but sometimes 22 to 24 hours. And if I'm just not hungry, yeah. And that's listening to the signs and signals for sure. Good for you, girlfriend. Consuelo asking hours are, are I think it's fasting hours are from 18 to 24, but have been stuck for the last month and haven't lost weight. Is it okay to add cinnamon to my black coffee during the fasting period? If you're adding cinnamon to your coffee during the fasting period, think, thinking that that's going to help you lose weight, I would just not lean on that, right? If you want to add cinnamon to your coffee, like I always say that that's, that's what you have to decide for you. Um, and sometimes your body's just at a place where it's working on other things. If you consistently stay with the routine that you have that got you to the point where you started to lose weight, I promise you it'll kick back in. You just have to be patient. Don't get desperate about it. Um, It'll, it'll kick in for sure. Janine, looking forward to this call. Such a great topic. I've done IF since August 2018 and working with you since September 2019. This lifestyle is a total game changer. 75 pounds lost and kept it off for four years. Yes, and my girl Janine is doing some great things uh, for herself and her future self and her family. And I'm so proud of you, Janine. Uh, proof that it works for sure. Jane, week seven, no fat loss yet that I can tell. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, being judgmental like that about our body, remember, um, it can really, really sway where your body is going to take you. So give your body the grace that it needs, right? Um, it's hard to tell if we have lost body fat because body fat lies underneath the skin. Um, but if you're seeing and seeing subtle changes and you're feeling good, then just trust that it will come um, when your body's ready to tap into that energy. Remember to get rid of body fat. We have to put our body into a fat utilization period of your day. And if you're not getting there yet, then you might still be at that place where your body's using stored energy that's not fat. So you have to create a fat burning opportunity in order to burn fat. And I think we lose sight of that sometimes. Patrice, hello, girlfriend. Good to see you. Um, Lawen, I think it is. I'm on my third week of intermittent fasting. I do 18.6. I've seen a change in my weight and how I feel. Ah, uh, some. I love it. And the feeling part is the best. Kathleen, are those of you who are doing 16 to 20 hour fast sleeping better or worse? When I fast, my sleep goes to crap. 56 postmenopausal. Okay. So here's some tips about, about your sleep. Um, remember when we're fasting, we're creating internal energy from storage. I, what I recommend doing when we start fasting and we have this abundance of internal energy and we say our sleep's going to crap is you have to cut all caffeine out. You have to make sure that you're monitoring how late you're eating in the evening and what it is you're eating at that last meal in the evening. Up your water intake and make sure you're getting your magnesium in you. Oftentimes, it's just an abundance of energy and you don't need as much sleep because the energy is being produced on the inside. So 
Try some of those tips and see if that helps you. Joy 80, fasting 24. So far, I lost four pounds in five days since changing from 18.6. Diane, girl, your videos are helping me more than more than ever. Thank you. You're welcome, girlfriend. And here, look, thank you for listening and implementing and just trusting the process. The, the results come when you trust one process. And I promise you, Joy 80, if you stick to this, it'll just get better with time. It'll just get better with time. Mary, I'm new to your channel, uh, but not to fasting. Awesome. Well, hopefully you'll um, implement some new things or hear some new things and um, make some uh, some new changes for yourself. Greg, oh, I, I know it's Cindy every time I read Greg Fletcher, but Greg Fletcher always comes out of my mouth. I'm the current, um, in the current June class doing 24. Today, I accidentally ate two cherry tomatoes from my garden during my fasting window because it's such an automatic reaction to eat the ripe tomato. Well, you know what? There's worse things. So enjoy your tomatoes in your garden and just resume things as normal. Stay in your fastest state if you want to. Everything is going to be okay. I would probably have a hard time resisting eating my homegrown tomatoes as well. So uh, just keep doing your thing, girlfriend. No big deal. Susan, uh, hello from SoCal. Please give us an example of what you eat and how many times you eat during your daily four-hour eating window. Thanks for learning so much. I do not share what I eat in a day. I stopped doing that several years ago because what I eat in a day is what works for me and what's authentic to me and has nothing to do with anyone else. If you want me to help you figure out what you need to eat, that's why that's why I hold um, consult calls that you can book. Or when you're inside the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman course, we do a whole week on feasting, and I give you a whole feasting guide. But I stopped giving out, uh, I stopped sharing what I eat in a day, which is like inclusive of everything that I eat in a day, because um, most people can't handle it. And it's not my responsibility to feed you. It's your responsibility to feed you. So please um, just understand that. And then I'm not saying I'm not ever going to do it. But right now, I just can't manage the feedback and the, the, um, the, I don't, it's just, it's, it's too much for the internet to handle to see someone else eat. I know there are a lot of people that do it and I know it's a big clicky thing for the internet, but I want you to figure out food for you. You have to figure out food for you because if I tell you that I eat, I'll tell you what I'm eating for dinner tonight. We're having a filet mignon and I'm going to make it in a cast iron skillet. I'm going to have a baked potato with some vegan butter on it and I'm going to steam some broccoli and have that. And that's going to be my dinner tonight. So that's what I'm having for dinner. Now you can come back and go, but Diane, I don't eat meat. Okay. Well, that's not my problem. <laughs> that's your problem, right? So fill in something else as a protein for the meat part. So it's too hard for me to help you learn how to feed yourself off of what I eat. So do some research, find the food that works for you, find the food that makes you happy, find the food that makes your family happy because you shouldn't eat any differently than them. And then mix and mingle things until you find a good combination of things that work easily for you and fit into your lifestyle. That is the absolute best advice I can give you for the food thing. Gladys, I have been doing 24, but have not seen a change in my weight. I have about 15 pounds to lose. Yeah, Gladys, it takes time. It takes time. And are you draining the tanks, right? So are you fasting long enough, feasting well enough, and are you putting fitness into your routine or some sort of movement to help um, accelerate the backup that your body has, which is why you're holding on to 15 pounds? So it's not as easy as just fasting. There's other components to it that are going to really kick it in for you. And that's why I talk about this every to, you know, twice a week for five years. It's endless, all the advice that you can have to make it work for you. I say jump into class and we summarize it all in three weeks. Vicki, hello, I'm new to IF. Feel much better so far. Thank you. Yeah, girlfriend, I'm super happy for you. The feeling better part is the biggest win. When you feel better, then you just get excited about the next phase that's going to happen for you. Colleen, have been following your plan for a week. Love your videos and looking forward to this new lifestyle. Awesome. Love it. Linda, I love your talks. You're so up. I think it's uplifting, not upbuilding. Um, okay. So that's the link to go get on the email list. If you want to just find out more about class, I'm going to start emailing you next week. I email you for every day. I give you proof that this works. I explain how the class is going to work for you and hopefully get you to the place where you'll just go all in. Something happens in our brain when we make a decision to go all in and learn something in a very pre-formatted way with um, other women and also 
with some accountability. So I'm there with you every single day inside the course, and I will help you get through this so that you can have success for sure. Jackie uh, from New Hampshire. Welcome, girlfriend. I've been doing 18, 6, and 24. Did my first 28-hour fast yesterday. My energy level went up, but still waiting for weight to come off. Been about six weeks. I've told my story here before. It took me an entire year to see the weight loss that I wanted an entire year because I was pre-diabetic. I had been battling insulin resistance. My my, I'm sure my thyroid was whacked out, but I didn't have it tested. Um, it's totally normal. I'm 56 postmenopausal, so everything's working. And I no longer have to manage weight or any of those things. So you have to give yourself time. Like what else are you going to do except create a lifestyle that you can look and feel your best forever? right? So the weight will come off. But the other thing that I teach in class, this is why it's super important to get into class. I help you get really honest with your feasting window. A lot of us are telling ourselves these tiny little lies about the things that we put in our feasting window. And we think because we're fasting, we should lose weight doesn't work like that. So we have to be really honest with that feasting window um, as well to get that weight to come off, um, especially for us women in menopause. Uh, Cynthia, hello from Connecticut. I am not currently fasting. I just started watching your videos yesterday. Well, girlfriend, join us. I'm super fun um, and we have a great community here. So we love to have you fasting with us as well. Uh, Deanna, just found you this week, day four. 20 hours of fasting and inflammation in my arthritic knee today is significantly less. Thank you. You are super welcome. So remember a lot of these pains that we have and a lot of these things that happen to our body as we start to age are the process of accumulation, right? And we get rid of the accumulation and things go back to normal. We have had women who have, um, canceled surgeries, gotten rid of canes, um, started back into running again, like you name it. Um, if your body is in an opportunity to heal, it will heal for sure. So give it, give it a, give it a go. Right. And I'm super happy for you because I know I had a grandmother who suffered from arthritis and that was one of the things I thought I was going to have to deal with too. Um, and you know, I, I don't want to be achy and painy for the rest of my life. I want to be able to move freely. And I'm hoping that that will continue to happen for you, Deanna. Um, just keep it up. And when that pain comes back, just get a nice long fast and then it'll go away. Uh, Rosemary, hello from U.S. Virgin Islands. Girlfriend, it's good to have you with us. Wendy, excited for the July course. Oh, girl, I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. Um, I just love an energized and enthusiastic group of women in class. Oh, my gosh, it makes my job so much fun. And I've been doing this every single month for over five years. And every single month, I get just ex as excited as I did the first month uh, for all the new women coming through class. So um, I can't wait to spend time with you. I am Buzzy Suzanne. I'm 68 and have just started fasting and I've lost five pounds already. The best part is my energy level is awesome. Yes, for sure. Because remember, your body's getting that energy from the inside with all the things that we say that we, we are not happy with. So super happy for you. Kathy Hello from Panama found your channel a week ago and I'm new to intermittent fasting, but we'll start now. I'm 73 and need to build up my energy and lose eight pounds. Excited for this journey. Oh girl, the energy part you are absolutely going to love. So circle back around and let us know how things are going going. Joy 80, do you have an option for on uh, oh, opinion on athletic greens to take when you break a fast or any suggestions on a green drink? Okay. So this is one of those things um, that I'm going to start focusing on in some of our talks moving forward. I, you have to test this out for you. So I would say if you have athletic greens and you want to try them to break your fast, the only way you're going to know if that's a good option for you is if you joy break your fast with athletic, athletic greens. Do I have an opinion about it? Absolutely not. Uh, absolutely not. You're the, I, cause I don't know, right? I don't know how it's going to make you feel when you break your fast. So give it a go and then report back to us and let us know how it goes. Marcella day five of 24 feeling great. Love it. Um, Linda from Illinois. I enjoy your uh, Illinois. I enjoy your videos. 18, six, looking forward to the July class. Linda can't wait to have you in class with us. Marlene, almost four weeks in at 24. The last two days felt a little dizzy or lightheaded. Is that an electrolyte problem? Uh, what's the best way to get electrolytes? Uh, it, it could be an electrolyte problem. Uh, the best way to get electrolytes, I just put them in my water. Um, so you can put them in your water. I know there's like fancy packets of things that you could buy. If that's within your budget and your ease of use, try that. So just any way you can get them in is the best way for you to get them in. 
Lillian, I found your channel last week. Well, welcome. We're so glad to have you and have been binging on your videos. I have been doing the 24, losing weight and not feeling guilty about making memories. Thank you for your wisdom. I love that. There should never be guilt associated with spending time with the people that we love making memory making moments. Um, you just got to be honest with yourself about the choices that you're making, right? And it sounds like you're doing that and just go enjoy yourself for sure. Life's too short to not have fun. Karen, hello from Calgary, was doing one meal a day, found you six days ago, now trying 20 hour fast. I feel better eating twice, some amount of food, but split up in a four hour window, learning a lot from you. Awesome. Okay. So one of the questions I get a lot is, again, it's that thing of, excuse me, tell us how you, tell us how many times you eat in a day. Okay. I eat as many times as I need to eat in a four hour feasting window. Sometimes it's four hours consistently, like just maybe it's a day where I'm just snacking all day and not having a big meal. Sometimes I eat once or twice a day. Sometimes I eat three times a day. Sometimes I like it, 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 I don't put those tight of rules on myself to go my feasting hours, four hours, and I only eat twice. I don't know how many times I'm going to eat today. Like, I don't know. Right. And so just know that a feasting window is set aside for feasting and a fasting window is set aside for fasting and don't merge the two. Let it just fall where it falls and see how that goes for you. I think we get so caught up in trying to make these tight rules for ourselves. That's when we end up failing, right? Because it's too hard to stick with tight rules and then we feel like we're failing. So then we quit. Just let it be what it is. So feast for four hours and fast for 20 hours and then don't merge the two and just enjoy what window you're in for the wind for the time that you're in that window. Tina, November 21 grad doing 22 to 24 hour fast this week, took Stevia out of my feasting window this week, finding cravings are way less and fasting going much better. Hello. Like we say that here all the time. Again, it's that stuff where you'll have those people tell you on the internet that stevia in your coffee is fine. And if you want that comfort, put stevia in your coffee. But if you haven't tried black coffee in your fasting window and you haven't tried seeking out a really good coffee, then you're missing out because there's nothing better than the energized sense of calm with a nice cup of black coffee with nothing in it that's going to mess up what your brain signals are about what it is you think you need. Because remember, stevia is that thing that just sends those signals to your brain that sweet things are what you need to get through your day. And the reality is you just don't know. So Tina, <clears throat> excuse me, I am so, so proud of you. Donna, new here, what do you think of alternate day fasting? I think if alternate day fasting works for you, then alternate day fasting is great. Alternate day fasting does not work for me. I just don't want to think about all that. So again, fasting protocols are very personality driven. So if that's working for you, Donna, I say alternate day, you're fast away. Like that's great for you. Is it better or worse than anything else? No. Consistency over time is the best thing that's going to work in any lifestyle that you create for yourself. Mary, I'm 22 hours into a 36 hour fast. I recently started one meal a day and was surprised at how easy it was to go from a 20 hour fast to one meal a day. Yeah, especially when you have your hunger hormones um, really balanced out and in control, then um, one meal a day is just a really busy day where you're not thinking about food all the time. Super, super easy for sure. Uh, Fetchy, I think it is from Kosova. Welcome. Jane, hi from Scotland. Signed up for your July course. Can't wait. Jane, I cannot wait to have you in class. It is the most fun time you're going to spend with some very like-minded women. Um, it's very encouraging. It's super fun. So hopefully you'll be really active in our community group and we'll get to know you a little bit more in there. Kathleen, you are so welcome. Um, does IF affect blood pressure and is it affecting me? And as it is affecting me, I think, I don't know. It all just depends on, you know, like what's causing your blood pressure to rise. If what did you have a problem before with blood pressure, how you're feeling about what it is you're doing, what you're doing in your feasting window. I can't answer that for you. Um, you have to just, you know, do a little research and figure that out for you. Deborah, hello from Georgia. Just started the 20 hour fast and have more energy. I'm 64. I've been into keto. I've lost 120 pounds and the last 20 pounds are tough. I'm going to say that that's what you meant by ugh. Definitely started moving. I love your videos. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And remember, you know, there's just something about our life transitioning into a new season that causes our body to change. And 
we, I think for a lot of us, we're not honest with ourselves about those changes. So the way I moved about my day when I had a toddler and an eight-year-old is a lot different than how I move about my day with a 22-year-old and an almost 16-year-old, right? And so my, my activity level is different. What I engage in is different. How I feel my body is different. How I exercise is different. Yet we still want everything to be the same as it was. So do a really honest inventory of your life. And maybe if you have a physique that you're confident in and you're happy with, the 20 pounds won't matter. The 20 pounds may not matter if everything else is good and happy in your life for sure. Jane, great tips here. I appreciate the information. You are welcome, my friend. Uh, Joker Alliance, hello. Thank you for the fasting channel. I have a question. How many hours a night do you personally have of sleep when you do a longer 20-hour fast? Like for me personally, I always shoot for seven seven to eight hours of sleep um, during the week. And on the weekends, I give myself one day, like Sunday, not give myself, but allow myself one day on Sunday to just sleep as long as I can sleep without waking up and that I can go nine to 10 hours of sleep. So um, I, I shoot for seven to eight hours on a daily basis. My fasting window doesn't, doesn't affect when I eat or when I sleep or when I don't sleep. Shari, I stumbled across you this morning while waiting for my tires to be changed. Well, that's fantastic. I have extremely high fasting insulin and have an A1C of 6.1 as shown by labs. I will be following you as I'm interested in IF. Yeah, for sure. My A1C was 5.9 when I started. Um, and I um, was a health and wellness coach when my A1C was that high. And so it happens to us because our hormones are changing, not that we're doing anything that's bad. And so um, I am proof that you can, in fact, reverse that condition in your body. And I teach all of that here. If you want to get the fast track and get that A1C down quickly, I recommend jumping into class with us. We start on the 2nd of July. All the information is available if you want to if you want to um, check it out. Um, and like I said, my mother in law had an A one C. I think it was seven point eight, and it went down to six point eight. Um, in three months, and I, you know, I coached her because she's my mother in law. We got on the phone like once a week, so it's doable. She's in her nineties. So, girlfriend Sherry, if you don't like that A one C, you have the power to change that for sure. Um, Consuelo, thank you for your help. You're welcome, my friend. Beth, hello from Iowa. Love your channel on 24 and I'm down 25 pounds in about three months. That sounds great. Good for you, girlfriend. Uh, Lori, day three, I'm 24 and dropped three pounds. I find I'm really looking forward to the feast and craving high quality food. Need to focus on eating enough during the feast. I feel, I feel full quickly when I start eating. Okay. So remember we, we ask something of our body and our body answers. So if your body is sending you the signal that it's full, that's being satiated, that's your brain telling your body, I've got everything that I need, stop putting stuff in, like stop the feasting. And so learn to trust the signs and signals your body is sending you. If you eat when you're hungry, it is okay to not eat when you're full. Don't overfeed yourself. That's what I call classic overeating. And that's just a trust system you have to develop with your body. Isabel, uh, thanks for sharing your dinner. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Lisa, are your classes live zoom calls? No, they are not. They're pre-recorded. You can jump in anytime during the day. One class every single day. I drip it to you because if you're like me, you want to get to the end. Um, and I make you go through the lessons because the way I teach it is exactly the way your body transitions when you really start living this lifestyle authentically. Um, so, uh, recorded calls one class a day for three weeks. And then you have an extra week in the community group where I assist you before I send you off on your way. Uh, crepe, been playing around with 16.8. Any insight on IF lowering thyroid hormones and raising cortisol? Uh, no, that's always a personal thing as well. You know, um, again, the cortisol, the cortisol fear is rampant. Um, and cortisol is just a hormonal response that your body has oftentimes to decisions you're making and the way your brain is operating. So uh, if cortisol is an issue for you, do some diving uh, into what's going on in your life or what's going on in your body chemistry that's causing that to happen. Is intermittent fasting going to cause your cortisol levels to go up? Absolutely not. Um, there's no need for that to happen at all. Um, rains, rains. 
Hello from Maryland. I started at 161.6 15 weeks ago and I'm only at 154 today. Tight pants are fitting well. What am I doing wrong? Okay, so let's break this down from a, uh, so I'm also a life coach. So I'm gonna break your statement down as if you hired me as your life coach. You went from 161 to 154 in about a three to four month time frame. I'm guessing because you're here, you're probably transitioning through menopause. And to say you only lost, what is that, eight pounds or something? Eight pounds is a big deal because you're probably doing it in the correct way. So give yourself credit for losing eight pounds. Um, your tight pants are fitting well, which is a huge win. Um, so who wouldn't want to celebrate that? Why are you doing anything wrong? Like what, what, what do you want from your body? Right? So I would go and do some thought work on that and figure out why your brain is creating all this conflict when your body is creating all these wins for you. Um, and then enjoy the journey. It sounds like you're, you might be, and I'm saying this with all the love and support I can send your way, you're cheating yourself out of some great work because your brain is sending you signals that um, are conflicting with what your body is responding to. So get that work done and I promise you, you'll enjoy it a lot more. Crepe, been doing 16-8 last several days. It's super easy. Today I'm at 19 hours without any effort. Can you share your insights on IF lowering thyroid hormones and raising cortisol? I think I just answered that. Um... Vianne, I've been intermittent fasting for two years and currently doing 24 for the last six months. Thanks for your channel and for the reminders that it takes time for your body to heal, for sure. Okay, so here's the other thing about what I like. Intermittent fasting is a lifestyle. It is not a diet. It's just a timing period, right, where we're going to choose to eat, choose not to eat. That's it. So make it super simple for yourself. So um, if you're not practicing intermittent fasting and you're not giving your body the opportunity to heal itself on the inside, what else are you going to do? Right? So give it the time and the grace that it needs to fall into place for you so that you can have everything that you say that you want. That is the way I love to teach this lifestyle. Is zero calorie flavored seltzer okay during a fast? Calories don't break a fast. Your body getting the signal to release hormones and create the chemical process that's needed to digest things is what breaks a fast. So if there's something in that seltzer water that could send that signal to your brain, it, I would not take the risk. Petri, how does fasting affect low blood pressure? What do you recommend? Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, I have naturally low blood pressure. Fasting doesn't affect me in any way. If you, if you're feeling like it's going to drop dangerously low, you have to talk to your doctor. Um, maybe you might need some electrolytes, um, added into your day. Marlene, I just love the way you help and teach us to come to that place where we know how to create our best lifestyle. I feel like I've learned so much. I'm 68. Wish I had found you years ago. Thank you so much. Well, years ago, I wouldn't be this way, right? Because just like I talk all the time about how, you know, um, 30 year olds shouldn't be telling 50 year old women what to do. Well, when I was 30 years old, I was telling 30 year old women what to do. And I was singing a different song because I was in a different place. So you're here at the right time for the right reasons. And me 30 years ago or 40 years ago, I was a different person. 40 years ago, I was only 14. 30 years ago, I was 26. I was 26. I was kind of a hot mess. So be glad you know me now. Um, I've done a lot of work. Uh, I've done a lot of studying. I've done a lot of practice in what I teach uh, with other women. So I say you're here at the right time because I feel like you're getting the best uh, of what we have to offer here. So welcome. And I'm super glad to have you. Uh, Deborah, hello from Texas. Girlfriend, hello. I'm a Texan as well. Do you count calories? Just started 18.6 fast and hope to move closer to 24. No, um, the way I teach intermittent fasting, you don't have to count calories. You don't have to manage macros. You just listen to the signs and signals your body sending you and inside class I teach you why so nope I do not uh, more more ween been doing 22 hour fast sometimes I feel cramps on my muscles and headaches is it just dehydration or do I need more minerals in between so uh, dehydration is the lack of minerals so yes you probably need more minerals um, some salts will work um, magnesium potassium and calcium are the ones you want to take I get mine here in the water that I drink it's mountain valley water Jermaine, hi, just reached 50 in December. I have seen all of it. No sleep, tired and gained 
back the way I lost. What are your suggestions? Jump into class with us on July 2nd is the best suggestion I could give you. Tina, what electrolyte drink do you recommend? I drink water with magnesium, potassium, and sodium in it, and I don't fear salt, so I salt everything that I eat. That's how I get my electrolytes. Um, how much is the class? It's $197 for four weeks with me as your coach, three weeks of lessons. Shez Shangs 2, hello from Nevada. I've been 16-8 IF and first, but then I discovered your videos and moved to 24 to lose more weight and rid these diabetes meds. Bless you for sharing um, us to improve our lives. Yeah, for sure, girlfriend. And, you know, med there's here's the thing I want to make sure we, we know about ourselves and we, we keep telling our brain. Sometimes medicine is needed to kickstart the change, right? But and, and it is okay for people who decide that medicine is a route that they want to take. Let them live their lives. If you are on medicine and you decided that medicine is not the route you want to take, please know that there are other ways. You can cure a lot of things that are ailing your body that are being managed by medicine. Please make sure your doctor is in the loop on what it is you're doing with fasting because fasting heals, medicine controls, and they're going to do this and you're going to get the the double positive effect of, of you making lifestyle changes and the medicine controlling your body. So please make sure you're talking to your doctor. And yes, you can reverse that for sure. I mean, it is the best thing. It is the best thing for sure. Janice, how long after you eat, do you test your blood sugar? I only test blood sugar a couple of days a week. Um, if you're trying to determine if food is causing you to have a glucose spike, um, I think it's like, it's like, anywhere from 60 minutes to 90 minutes after you've consumed food. Um, I don't test my glucose after I eat. Um, when I was going um, on this journey, I didn't test at all. I didn't start testing anything until I was three years in because I needed to get my mind right first to make sure I wasn't going to become obsessive about it. Um, but if you're testing it to see if you're having certain spikes or if food is causing some sort of like you know, reaction in your body. I think it's 60 to 90 minutes after you eat. The best thing to do with those kind of things, if you're using a specific device, go to that device's website and do a little search on there. They'll give you recommendations for sure on um, when you should be testing or using their device. Nashaba, would you uh, suggest me weight loss fasting method if my gallbladder is removed? Um, so if you're asking if you should intermittent fast with a gallbladder that has been removed, I, yeah, I have lots of people who have their gallbladder removed and are practicing intermittent fasting. Again, you know, you just want to make sure that you're taking the advice from your doctor and making the necessary nutritional changes that you need to do to support where you are in your life currently. Sandy, after taking the class, I feel like my self IQ increased because I always felt a little dumb because I couldn't lose it and keep it off. But I am smart. Figured it out for me. Okay, Sandy, thank you for saying that. And that's because we're taking advice from people that have no idea who we are. One of the things I really recommend, and for everyone who's here, all 190 of you, listen to what I'm about to say. When you're on the internet and you're engaging in comment sections and you're asking people for advice, don't start the question with, can I? Because no one should answer that question for you except for you. If you ask me, can I have lemon in my water? I'm going to say, I don't know. Can I fast for 20 hours. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know you, right? So I can't give a stranger advice. And I, I understand that there's a little bit of this relationship, um, you know, conflict on the internet because I come talk to you guys every day and I know and appreciate that you guys feel like you know me. Um, but for a lot of you, I don't know you. So I can't give you advice. I will always teach you to figure it out for yourself. Just like Sandy said, like we walk around feeling like, and I get it because I get this, uh, this statement from women all the time. I don't know how to feed myself. I don't know what to eat. That's a scary thing for me to hear from women because it's like, wait, what, what, do you, what happened? Like you should know how to feed yourself. As grown women, a lot of us have raised children into, you know, from babies to adults and they're thriving in the world. We've managed careers for a lot of us. We run companies and we can't figure out the simple simple concept of feeding ourselves. 
Like what happened, right? So I'm going to give you that permission to figure it out, fail a little bit, make some mistakes, come back, share with me how, what you did and how you felt. And we'll think it through together, but I want you to feel empowered and I want you to have permission to make decisions for yourself based on what it is you say that you really want so that you can look and feel your best and do it in your most authentic way so that if I decide I'm not going to show up on YouTube and Facebook anymore, you're not going to panic because you're going to be like, I got it. I've got it. I know how to take care of myself. Women need to learn how to take care of themselves so you don't have to depend on anybody else to tell you what to do. That is the best love I can give you here on a Thursday for sure. So Sandy, thank you so much for sharing that thought. And you are smart. You know how to take care of yourself for sure. Tina, so only coffee, tea, and spring water during fast. No carbonated. Girlfriend, this is carbonated. This is carbonated right here. It's sparkling water. What you don't want to have is sparkling water with essence or flavors or those kind of things. So pure, clean water with carbonation is not a problem. This is one of the secret, secret tools that we use to help control our hunger hormones. So carbonation is not the problem. It's essence in carbonated water, like the, you know, LaCroix and those kind of things. Jay Wasson, I fast for 20 to 22 hours and feast for four to two, depending on the day. Congratulations. I think that's fantastic for you. Okay. So we had a great conversation today. Thank you for everyone who's sharing. Is fasting safe? You're the only person that can decide that for yourself based on what safe means for you, right? And what it is you want to do with your life and how you're going to enter into some lifestyle changes. So got to do the work on you first. I am always here to help you, guide you, and give you some tips, but you have to do the work. I always recommend jumping into class because that's where I give you the power to take your life back. You will have everything that you need to do, to know to be successful moving forward forever. And then you just tweak and you ebb and flow as your own personal life changes. It is the best, most empowering way to go. How do I know? Because I did it for myself and now I've taught thousands of other women to do it as well. And I want you to be part of our graduate community also. Um, we do have registration open on July 2nd. I really recommend jumping in if you're if you're really want to, wanting to establish something that can stand the test of time and something that you can decide to do for yourself for the rest of your life, you can do this for the rest of your life and you will always be able to reap the benefits. I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. Make sure you get on my email list. My graduates who have been anxiously awaiting information about the Midlife Mindset Shift course, registration opens up officially tomorrow. We won't start till July 4th. So you have a little bit of time, but I will definitely make sure I get that out for you guys tomorrow. Uh, Maureen, I'm watching from the UK. Just watched your live stream from 9th of June on YouTube. Brilliant. Makes perfect sense. I'm 60 starting tomorrow. Already fast 16 to 8. Fantastic. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Um, you said it gorgeous. Eat what's right for you when it's right for you. Yes, 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 yes. Donna, my A1C when I started watching your videos was 14 plus severe diabetic. Now after one year, I'm in the low sevens and steadily on my way down. Thank you. Donna, I'm going to read that one again. My A1C when I started watching your videos was 14 plus severe diabetic. Now, after one year, I'm in the low sevens and steady on my way down. Thank you. Donna, rinse and repeat. Just keep rinsing and repeating. And I promise you, before you know it, that D word will have nothing to do with you and your life moving forward. I am D being diabetic. I am so proud of you. Thank you for being a uh, loyal follower and listening to the advice that I give and then making sure that it works for you super proud of you, my friend. You are going to live a great life and not have to manage diabetes moving forward. Make sure you're very proud of yourself. You did the work and I'm so happy for you. Yeah, for sure. Make sure you say uh, congratulations to my girl, Donna. How the class go? How much weight can I lose? I don't know how much weight you can lose, my friend. You are the only one. Your body's the only one that can determine how much weight you're going to lose. It depends on the decisions you make and how consistent you're going to be. So you're the only one that can decide that for sure. Okay. I have got to run. Thank you so much for such an engaging conversation. I always appreciate you guys being in those comment sections. Before you click off for today, 
do me a favor, hit that like button on YouTube, hit that like button on Facebook. It does help me uh, be able to continue to offer this free community advice and coaching information to all of you here. It just helps my YouTube channel grow, helps my Facebook page grow. And the more women we have tuning in with us, like I said, it just makes it easier for me as someone who comes here and gives this type of coaching advice for free. So I appreciate that if you'll take a second to do that. And then I'll see you guys not on Monday. I am taking the day off on Monday. Um, I am going to be in school Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., sharpening my own skills. So I won't be here on Monday, um, but I will put something in the comment section for you guys. And maybe I'll just request or recommend a video for you guys to watch on Monday instead of joining us here live. Have a fun weekend. Uh, celebrate Father's Day. If you're celebrating Father's Day for sure, have fun, make those memory making moments, and I'll see you guys back here next week.